Hey, Pokemon Masters, Berkey Patoe here, and I've been looking forward to revisiting this topic. And I say revisiting because in this video, I'm going to be sharing all of the Easter eggs, hints, and secrets that pointed towards Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, Diamond and Pearl remakes that appeared in Pokemon Sun and Moon for the 3DS. Because these were the games after Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, and this was how early we were talking about Sinnoh confirmed. We've been saying Sinnoh confirmed for a long time, but obviously, this was five years ago, so were the hints that we were seeing in these games, were they really hints, or were we just seeing what we wanted to see? I don't know, it'd be interesting to try and scour them and find hints for Gen 5 remakes. I don't think you could do it. I think some of the hints were actually kind of legitimate. There was a lot pointing towards Generation 4 coming back. But hopefully we can do this trip down memory lane and laugh at me together, because I definitely covered all of this stuff back when it was all happening. So without further ado, let's look at 10 very legitimate legitimate hints for Generation 4 remakes in Sun and Moon. But first, Pokemon Masters, I have two quick announcements. Number one, you're in with a chance of winning uh, a copy of Pokemon Legends Arceus if you leave a comment on this video. That is because I am giving away three copies of Legends Arceus when the games come out, and every comment on a video of mine that has either Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, or Legends Arceus in the title, it'll act as an entry. And that's worldwide. Anyone can enter. So if you comment on any of my videos, obviously I prefer that you watch them still, but, you know, leaving comments on any of them puts you in with a chance of winning. Also, I will be taking my first first steps into the wider world again by appearing at my first convention post uh, post pandemic. If you are in or around London from the 26th to the 28th of November, right after Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl come out, you can head on over to Social in the City at the London XL. This is my favorite event every year. It's it's my it's the number one one that I always try to go to. It is a very well it built up from a very grassroots community driven convention where it's just other YouTubers hanging out and talking about YouTube. Now, now it's expanded to so much more. While I will be there, so too will loads of other YouTubers and other online creators. Some you might know, some you might not know, but we all love to, you know, we meet up, we do panels, we talk about what it's like to be a YouTuber, answer your questions if you have any questions in that field. We talk about, you know, whether you're a YouTube gamer or a YouTube vlogger or sports person or beauty person or whatever the field is that you're interested in. Uh, I'm sure I will do some kind of gaming YouTube Pokemon related panel. But also, it's not one of those things where there's like a huge queue of people where you have to wait to meet me. I will be having a booth where I'm selling merch and we can just hang out all weekend and play Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl, trade Pokemon cards. Obviously, this year it'll be a little bit different. I'll be following whatever the uh, guidelines are that the uh, that the event puts forward. I myself will probably be wearing my mask uh, for the entirety of the convention and there will absolutely be hand sanitizer available all weekend at my stand. So if like me, you're like cautiously optimistic feeling like, yeah, November, okay, let's, let's do this. This. Let's get back out into the world. Uh, consider coming to social in the city. I'm really looking forward to kind of getting back out there. And without further ado, let's jump into it. 10 Easter eggs, secrets, hints, things that clearly pointed towards Generation 4 remakes. You know what they say, a broken clock is at least right two times a day. Starting off with number one, Cyrus and Cynthia. Their names literally mean sun and moon. Cyrus is the sun and Cynthia is the moon. So in the generation where the main games are sun and moon, it felt pretty reasonable to assume that in this generation we would see generation four remakes. Uh, I, I think I was expecting them perhaps after ultra sun and ultra moon, but instead we moved to the switch and we got let's go. But come on, Toby, a couple of naming conventions does not mean a lot by itself. Well, how about this? Number two on Mealy Mealy Island, which of course is one of the Alolan Islands, inspired by real life Hawaii, there are two areas inspired by Pearl Harbor and the Diamond Head Volcano. A pearl and a diamond, a diamond and pearl. I think we've since learned that the area that people thought was inspired by Pearl Harbor wasn't actually inspired by Pearl Harbor. It's a totally different harbor in Hawaii. But the point at the time, I remember that was such a big point of contention. People are like, okay, Sun and Moon, Cynthia and Cyrus, and then Diamond Head Volcano. Pearl Harbor, uh, it's sounding pretty convincing to me. Especially when added in with number three, Sil Valley, a legendary Pokemon that just randomly appears in Sun and Moon inspired by the Arceus. It's, it's got the RKS system where it can change type depending on the item it's holding, which is the exact same as Arceus. It's the Arceus 
Arceus system. Now, one generation earlier in Pokemon X and Y as a way of hinting towards Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire camp coming out, they gave you a gift uh, Torchic holding a Mega Stone. It's kind of a way of saying, hey, the Hoenn starters are gonna get Mega Evolutions Hoenn remakes are coming. So what did they do with Pokemon Sun and Moon as like an early pre-order gift bonus? They gave us a Munchlax. A Munchlax! A Generation 4 Pokemon holding its Z-Crystal. So, y it, you know, it seemed pretty likely that Gen 7 was going to see Sinnoh remakes happen. Additionally, point number five, there was a real lack of Sinnoh Pokemon in the Sun and Moon Pokedex. I think there was only like three evolutionary lines that appeared, like the Gibble line, the Luminion line, uh, and then another, another evolutionary line. There was like no Sinnoh native Pokemon in the Alolan Pokedex. So again, like, well, if if generations like complete each other, sort of feels like, like, even as I'm saying it now, it almost seems surprising that they didn't do Diamond and Pearl remakes as part of generation eight. And that's just the first five points. They're pretty quick points. Number six, thematically, it would really fit because what did Sun and Moon introduce? The Ultra Beasts, Pokemon, legendary Pokemon from other dimensions. Sounds a lot like, you know, Dialga, Palkia, Spear Pillar, Dimensional Portals. Um, and in these dimensions, there were like alternate worlds, which in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, we explored as the Ultra Spaces, the various Ultra Spaces. D that's, that's the Distortion World. That just reminds you of the Distortion World. In fact, in the games, the lab that studies these interdimensional Pokemon has several books talking about Palkia and its ability to bend space and Bronzong and its ability to open portals. Number seven, in Pokemon Sun and Moon, there were returning characters to the battle tree at the end of the game. Wally showed up, but I guess that makes sense because Auras was the game before this. Uh, we also see Red and Blue, but of course it's the 20th anniversary with these, so they wanted to, you know, show off those classic characters and Cynthia shows up why did they need to have Cynthia's model on the 3ds ready and waiting sort of seemed like maybe they were they were pointing towards something that didn't happen on the 3ds number nine the Rotom Dex Rotom for the I know it seems like normal now because we got the Rotom phone and the Rotom bike in Galar But before this point the only new Rotom forms we had came in platinum version Suddenly Rotom seeing love with the Rotom decks Rotom is getting new forms must mean gen 4 remakes are coming and those are just the first eight points How did diamond and pearl remakes? How did brilliant diamond and shiny pearl? How was that not part of generation 7? I genuinely don't know. For number nine, we'll look outside of the games. We'll do two honorable mentions for number nine. Uh, number nine, in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, a lot of people pointed to the fact that you could see pictures of Spear Pillar inside the Selfco building, which there were a lot of pictures in the Selfco building, including of areas of like Johto, for example, but still it convinced a lot of people that still as part of that generation, because Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee came out before Sword and Shield, people thought, oh, well maybe they do Let's Go now and maybe Diamond and Pearl will come as Let's Go games or something, like as an extension to this or as like a DLC to this. There are a lot of ideas that are thrown out there. And as another similar uh, kind of more tangential honorable mention, uh, I guess a 9.5, if you will, they did the 20th anniversary movie, which is part of the Sun and Moon era, you know, featuring the mythical Pokemon Marshadow and featured two new companion characters for Ash, created entirely for the movie, Verity and Sorrel. And Verity is from Sinnoh, has a Piplup and is obviously related to Cynthia. We, we can argue about that later. And Sorrel has a Lucario. Why would they both have Sinnoh focused Pokemon and they're both from the Sinnoh region? But it didn't happen then. And finally, so. Going back in time, if you are a Pokemon fan in 2016 going into 2017 and you run a Pokemon YouTube channel and you're thinking about what Pokemon games are next, I just want to defend myself here and say, I don't think it was that ridiculous that I believed that Gen 4 remakes would be part of uh, part of that generation. Obviously, when Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon got announced, it became kind of weird because we were like, hang on, surely this should wait till after the Sinnoh remakes. And then when Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee came out, it was like, oh, I, I guess they're just waiting until the next generation. And to be fair, while I did see these hints and I was like, oh wow, it looks like they might actually do it. I wasn't convinced that we would see Diamond and Pearl remakes until at least 2019 2020 and here we are going into 2021 or end of 2021 and now we're finally getting them so based on the time scale i was expecting 
that makes sense. But um, based on the hints that were in game, I genuinely thought that perhaps in 2017, were we really gonna see Sinnoh remakes so soon? However, you might realize I'm not at number 10 yet because number 10, number 10 is one of those things where like, uh, like I look at all of the aforementioned points and I think, yeah, yeah, the, I'm not like trying to see things there. Because yeah, I, I don't think I could go to these games and find hints for the, uh, I, I couldn't find hints for the Unova games. Like I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, not gonna look through Sun and Moon and find hints that point towards Unova remakes. That just doesn't make sense. But my goodness, the one that I'm glad I never covered at the time, number 10 on this list, the clouds. The clouds. When Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon got announced, there was a little poster image um, of the Alola region, the new changed Alola from Sun and Moon to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And there, of course, above Pony Island is a big dark circular cloud, a void that perhaps looks a little bit like the access to the distortion world, which to be fair, it does. But then there were also other parts of the clouds that people were saying looked like Dialga and Palkia. And like, this was huge, huge enough that you can search today. Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon Clouds, the Algorand Palkia, and you will f you will find the, the various tweets and posts and references to this that people were talking about because people genuinely, genuinely believed it. And that was one of those bits of evidence that I just thought, okay, maybe not. Gosh, I do love that kind of speculation. I, I think there's a lot more hints to Diamond and Pearl remakes, obviously in like Sword and Shield and it's DLCs, I've covered that all over the channel. And I think they're again, a little bit more legitimate. Although that said, again, on reflection, just powering through those first eight or nine, um, it did actually really seem like they were gonna do Diamond and Pearl remakes last generation. But I guess, I guess we get them now. I just thought it'd be fun to kind of take something nice and embarrassing like that because we all partook in it, myself, of course, as well. Uh, put it front and center and give it one more moment in the sun and moon before it disappears forever. But I am now finally looking forward to those Diamond and Pearl remakes. And who knows, maybe in Legends Arceus, I'll be on the lookout for Gen 5 remakes confirmed. So hi, Pokemon Masters. This is Ash Ketchum. You just watched a video by Bird Keeper Toby. That makes you a Pokemon Master. What in the world? So many of you are supporting me on Patreon right now. Thank you so much to the big Patreons of this month. There's JD Gottlich, Massey Bar, Pokey Bliss, Pokey Atmos, and Michael Hornshoe. Thank you.